What's going on everyone? My name is Ali al -Kirguli. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Job Propulsion Lab. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a very brief thinking exercise that's going to help you determine whether you are meant to be an engineer or not, or whether engineering is a thing you're interested in. And we're basically going to look at this dude that's sitting on top of this block, that's sitting on top of this ramp. And we're simply trying to answer the question, is this guy going to fall? Or is this guy going to stay in the same place, right? Now, I've intentionally not placed any numbers in here because the goal of this video is not to just give you yet another physics exercise where you just plug in some numbers and, and do some equations because I, I honestly think this is what's wrong with physics education or engineering education in general is that like professors explain things in a way where they explain some weird phenomena and then they're like, here's this equation and then they give you like one missing number and you just plug a bunch of stuff in and then you like solve it and then you move on and like no one like understood anything, right? <laughs> so we're gonna do this the other way around where we're gonna actually try to really, really understand what's going on. So the very first thing that helps me figure out whether you're an engineer or not is that it's to ask the question, right? Like whenever you're coming to solve a problem, there has to be a problem, right? You figure, you first have to identify what the problem is. So in this case, the problem is we're trying to find out is this dude gonna fall or is he not gonna fall, right? So then the problem becomes answering this question, right? Is this guy gonna fall or is this guy not gonna fall? Now the next thing you would do if you are an engineer or if you have a tendency to think like an engineer is you're gonna think, what are the things that makes a person fall, right? You try to, in order to, to answer the question, you try to determine what this question is even made up of, right? So you think, what makes something fall in general, independent of whether it's this dude or this block or this ramp or whatnot. And if you studied very basic mechanics, you know that things are usually falling or quote falling because they are, um, they, there's some gravitational field that's pulling on them. And as a matter of fact, this dude right here is being pulled by the core mass of the earth. And same with this block and same with this ramp. But let's say this ramp is like fixed and it's like very heavy in place, so it's not moving. Uh, and then th th there's this block and this dude. The reason we know that the reason things fall is because of some type of gravitational pull. And this is something that people don't quite understand about gravity is that gravity does not like act in a single direction. It's usually two things that are pulling uh, on each other. So just like how the earth or the mass of the earth is pulling on this dude and this dude is about to fall, this dude is also pulling on the earth a little bit. So like the force is is pretty much like trying to bring them closer together. It's just that this dude is so much lighter that he's just gonna end up crashing uh, into the earth while the earth is, itself is not gonna move. So the very first thing we ask is, what makes things move in the first place, right? And the thing, the thing that makes things move in the first place is that there's a force that's acting on them. And more specifically, if something is falling or quote falling towards the earth, that means the earth's gravitational field is pulling on it. So we instantly know that there's some type of gravitational force. We can call this like F of G, or even G that's pulling on this dude. There's also a gravitational force that's pulling on this block, F of G, right? There's even a gravitational force that's pulling on, on, on this ramp. There's gravitational force that's pulling on the water, right? So now we, we ask the second question, which is like, all right, if, if gravity is what makes something fall, or in this case, any type of force that's being applied in this direction is pushing the thing in that direction, well, what makes something not fall? What determines if something is not falling, right? So if this dude or this block were staying in the same place, how do we, like what makes them stay in the same place, right? Obviously that means some, there's some type of force that's counteracting gravity or that's countering gravity in general. And in this case, if this dude is standing on a block and he's not falling, that means whatever material he's standing on top of is causing enough friction but that friction is creating a force that's holding the dude back. So let's say right between this dude's shoes and this block over here, there's enough friction to counter the amount of force that's being pulled on by gravity. Let's say that's going in that direction. And then on the other hand, let's say for this block and this ramp, there's also some type of friction, some, some material uh, property that's causing that this block to not slide. So the dude is not sliding off the block and the block is not sliding off the ramp, right? So then we have gravity trying to pull this dude and this block down. And then we have friction that's keeping the dude on the block and then a different kind of friction here that's keeping the block on the ramp, right? So 
If those forces were equal, then we know that this is a static situation. Things are not moving. Now, in order for things to start moving, either this, uh, th th this, this gravitational, uh, the, the gravitational uh, pull is, is going to have to be much, much larger to counteract that friction force. So how do we cause that to happen? What are things um, that, that cause for that type of motion to happen? So again, we go back to the question. Okay, so now we know what makes something fall. And we know that what makes something not fall, right? In this case, let's say it's the gravi gravitational pull versus the friction in this case. Now we ask another question, which is at which point um, do we know that, wh where is the tipping point where things transition from being able, from, from, from not falling to falling, right? So in this case, we can ask something along the lines of, okay, how much does this dude actually weigh? And how much is this block actually weighing? Because we know that from the gravitational equation, the mass of this guy is gonna determine directly the force between the Earth and this guy. And likewise, the mass of this block is gonna determine the force between this guy and this block. And once we're able to answer those questions, only then do we go ahead and start plugging in the numbers. And then we find out whether something is gonna uh, uh, drop or whether some, something is gonna stay in the, the same place. Now, why am I explaining this thing? Which may be like, again, very intuitive, very obvious, very simple, is very often when you learn about this kind of problem in physics, uh, you're, you're, you're presented it in a scenario where you're, again, given some type of mass, for the person, some type of mass for the block. Uh, you assume gravity, gravity is like 9.8, uh, the like I don't know uh, meters per second square. And um, once once you do that, like if you immediately jump into that mode where you're just starting to plug in numbers without first thinking about what are even the forces acting upon and what causes things to fall or not in the first place, you're not gonna fully understand what what you're doing because then you're just kind of plugging numbers in. But the moment you do, you engage in this exercise of actually thinking like what actually causes things to act in that direction, then you're not going to be confused by all the different arrows that are happening because you're like, okay, as long as the forces are balanced, the thing is not, the guy is not going to fall. And as long as the gravitational force uh, is much stronger than whatever friction uh, the material is causing, then the guy is going to uh, fall. And then you transition to solving for the variables of the weight of this person, the coefficient of friction, and you calculate what those forces are, and then you just go ahead and solve them. And then you actually understand how the problem works. So if you are able to follow that thought process of starting with a problem, asking why it would be one way, asking why it would be the other way, and then only then going ahead and trying to find out what the variables are, and then listing what those variables are, finding the missing variable and solving for that, then you are likely to be a very, very good engineer. Uh, if your initial intuition is to just say, oh, give me some numbers, I need to plug it into the equation, uh, that means like you just memorize an equation and you don't actually fully understand what is going on here. And that may get you to solve some of these problems and pass some tests, but it won't get you to be a great engineer, in my opinion. Um, anyway, that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, love.